What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365Geek, and today we are looking at Power Automate, and we're going to talk about the CDS current environment connection, and we're going to look at an action and how to set a lookup for it. So lookups in CDS allow you to link one piece of data to another piece of data. So it's one of the best things and one of the most powerful things about um, CDS or Dynamics 365 is that it's a relational database and that's why it has a lot of advantages over other sorts of um, data storage systems like SharePoint or Excel. You can link one record to another record, so it's super powerful and super great. If you're used to the D365 um, actions or the CDS um, actions which are outside of the current environment connection, then you'll know that to set a lookup, you just need to specify the, um, the duet of the record that you're looking up to, and Dynamics handles the rest. It's slightly different for the CDS current environment trigger, and that's what we want to take a look at today. So I'm in my uh, CDS current environment flow here. So this is inside a solution because that's the only way you get access to the triggers and the actions. And then this uh, is a CDS current environment trigger. Uh, it says when uh, the when an account is updated, uh, we're going to add a filtering attribute into here. Um, so we'll change this. So we'll say when account is updated, uh, and we're going to choose I think it's telephone one. I think I'm right, my keyboard buffer telephone one. There we go. So only when the telephone is updated, we are going to run this flow and trigger this flow. Underneath that, we have a create new record. And again, this is from the current environment, um, current environment actions inside of this flow. Uh, and what we are saying is we, when, a, when an account is updated, when the telephone number is updated, we now create a new record and a new account record called test with UTC now. Now down here we have primary contact. So primary contact in um, in an account for CDS or Dynamics denotes who is the main main point of contact for that account or that company. Now this is quite handy to have because it allows people that are looking through the records to say, oh, this person's a key decision maker or this is the person we need to talk to at this business. I'll pick up the phone or I'll email this person. And the primary contact allows you to actually bring some information through to the account record so you can see maybe their telephone number and their name um, and who they are. So again, this shows the kind of the power of CDS or Dynamics 365. So setting a primary contact is what we're going to do. So when the record is created, I'm going to set the primary contact. Now to set the primary contact, I need um, I need a couple of things. I need to understand the syntax of what I am writing. So um, what this actually does does, I believe in the background, is that it's, it's kind of like an API call. So what it is looking for is you to format it like you would an API. Um, so we don't need the the, the whole string, um, the whole sort of API endpoint. All we need is the um, the last bit to say what entity it is and what the do it is. So in this instance, um, I'm going to choose forward slash um, to, to denote where we're going. Um, this is the, the next part of it. We type contacts. Um, so the first thing to note is that it uses the plural for the entity or the record type that we're looking at. So in this instance, it would be contacts. If I was setting a quote, it would be quotes, opportunity, opportunities, account would be accounts, that sort of thing. Um, then we need to open the brackets and inside the brackets, we then put the druid. Now um, to get the druid of a record, um, we are going to go back to dynamics. This is my dynamics system, my CDS system. Rose contacts, and I'm going to open Bruce Wayne. So now, there's a couple of ways to get the contact ID, so the druid for this record. One is it's actually up here in the uh, in the address bar right here. So where it says contact ID, it's actually telling me that that's what there is. Um, you don't always get this um, this URL bar if you open it in new windows and things like that, or it opens in a different window. Um, so you don't always get that. So another way we can get this is using Level Up, which I've spoken about before. It's a great tool. has an option for record ID. So if you click on record ID, it says druid of the record it'll be copied to my clipboard, fantastic. So I can go back to the flow, and inside this contacts, I'll just paste that number in, and then I'll close the brackets. So we've got our GUID, which is our 36 character long GUID. Uh, we are specifying where that is going to, so this is going to contacts, uh, and we are going to set the primary contact. So let's test this out. If I click test, see so I'll perform the trigger action, save and test. Uh, and we'll wait for that to uh, begin. And 
Oh, if that looks go over to our accounts record just to make sure this is running. Yeah, it is running. Great. And I will go to uh, maybe Matt's awesome company because I'm awesome. Uh, and we'll add uh, a couple of digits onto the phone number to trigger the flow. Hit save and close. And then we will refresh and we can see we've got a new company down here, this test one. So we see we've created it and we've also set the primary contact as Bruce Wayne. So you can see there's a quick view card over here and it's pulled through uh, Bruce Wayne's email address and there's also a space for the business telephone number which isn't populated. So we've created the account and we've populated a lookup using the Duid. So that's, that's fantastic, that's exactly what we wanted to do. However, we can we can kind of go one step further with this. So instead of creating an account, so go back to this record and we can see this is this is run through successfully. We can still use dynamic content. We don't need to specify um, we don't need to specify a, uh, an, a, a you know a do it each time we do this. So if I change the entity from uh, accounts and we uh, create a contact instead, contacts uses the plural name. We'll wait for that to finish. Right, okay, item name. So we'll delete some of this stuff uh, out. Uh, that's all good. So actually, do you know what? I might just delete this entire step and just create contact again because I don't want it to mess up with some of that pre-populated information. So we'll choose common data service, current environment. We'll choose create new record. And from here, we'll choose contact or contacts. Uh, contacts, great. There we go. And wait for it to load the streamer. Which may just take a second. There we go. There we go. So we have a bunch of fields for um for a contact. So we've got last name, for instance. So we could say uh, maybe last name is West. Uh, down here, strangely enough, is first name. Uh, so we'll choose Wally, uh, Wally West, and we'll choose Wally at uh, was it CentralCity.com. There we go. Uh, job title: uh, He is a detective, I think. So we can create a contact, and we can give them a name, and we can give them an email address and everything. But maybe we want to set um, the company name. So from here, we can choose a lookup. So company, uh, company name for accounts. So uh, we want to select the parent account or parent contact for the contact to provide a quick uh, and uh, quick link to additional details such as financial information, activities, and opportunities. That's handy. So in here, so even though this is specifying contacts, so this looks like it's a um, you know a, a by uh, bi-directional lookup, so you can not bi-directional lookup, but kind of you can choose two different um, two different lookups for this, like a, a customer account, a customer field. Um, you can choose an account, or you can choose a contact. Even though I'm writing it in here, I still need to specify the the do it in the path. So again, we're going to choose forward slash, we'll type accounts, and we're going to open the bracket. Now in here, I'm actually going to choose the account from the dynamic content. So it says account, unique, identify for the account, put that in there, and we close the bracket. So if I just put the account in, it would fail. If I put accounts and then uh, open bracket in this, it should work. So let's save. Uh, and let's, uh, let's test this out. So what we should see is we should see a contact get created. Uh, once the contact is created, it will set the account name, which is the account we're going to trigger this from. So uh, we'll click on test. I'll perform the trigger action. Uh, starting, so what we'll do is we'll go back to our main page. Uh, we'll choose uh, Wayne Enterprises. Uh, and we'll update the telephone number, we'll put maybe a one on the end of it, and we'll hit save and close. Uh, yeah, ignore and save, I know the duplicates is fine. Um, and that's that's all we need, and then we can go over to contacts. Uh, and if we refresh, refresh, or we go back to our flow, ah, flow run failed, that's interesting. So, why did this fail? So it's good. Ah. So it removed the uh, bracket at the end of my uh, end of my thing. That's weird. 
Uh, still there. Maybe I just need to add space. Give it a bit of space. Uh, we'll try with the last last run that we just did. See if this works. Sometimes setting these is a little flaky. Uh, flow is running. Flow uh, is running successfully this time. We'll go back here. We'll refresh. We can see Wally West. Uh, we can see Wally West, and we can see that it's linked to the Wayne Enterprises um, account. So we can click through there, and because we have the relational database, we can click through and we can see this. So that's fantastic. So that's done exactly what we want it to. So it went off, it created the record, and it used the DOID from inside here. So it seemed to be that um, it didn't like the fact that the the bracket was so close to the uh, so close to the fluid. It kind of missed it off, uh, but added the space in there. Just kind of worked fine. Um, so is a good thing to uh, to note is that it is sometimes a little flaky. You might want to just double check some of these things uh, like this, but we got there in the end. So yeah, it is a different style of behavior. It's not something that I think if you come from a dynamics or a CDS background, you'll ever have thought that, okay, I need to set this um, as a path, especially if you're not a developer, uh, because we've never had to do with that workflows, we've never had to do with that flow in the past, but for the current environment connector is important, is something you do need to do. So I hope this video was useful. Um, this uh, this has kind of been a, a bugbear of a lot of people that tried to get started with flow, they can't set lookups and things like that, um, and it's sometimes hard to find that information. So I hope this will be useful to you, uh, and if it is, let me know in the comments down below. If you've not already, um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and if you did like this video please like and share it I did that in a different order today um, just throw me off um, but yeah I hope this is useful and I'll see you next time